Hello, I'm Boris Häusler. I am an astronomer at Nottingham University, and I was just on an observing trip to Hawaii, and Brady gave me this little camera that I took with me um, to record whatever I thought was interesting for a general audience on 60 symbols. And yeah, this is what uh, we made out of it. It is a quarter to four on 27th of February, and I am on my way to the bus to catch a plane to Hawaii, where I will go observing on a telescope, and I will try to take you with me. So I'm standing at the main uh, building, and if you look around, there's these are the dormitories. Um, so this is a picture of uh, the, the hotel, basically, where you stay as an observer. It's roughly at 3,000 meters above sea level, so it's between the mountains, close to the Saddle Road. Um, it's basically a hotel, but only astronomers stay there, so there's day crews for the telescopes and night crews. Um, the reason it's here, not on the summit, is because on the summit it's too high, so you can't really sleep there. Um, so you go down to 3,000 meters from 4,200 something. For me, being an astronomer was all about going observing, going to the telescopes and gathering your data. So we don't have labs that we can work in and do experiments. This is where we go and do the hard work and gather the data and then come back and, yeah, spend months sitting in front of our computer analyzing the data. And for me, part of the whole romance about being an observational astronomer was actually going out to use the telescopes in these exotic parts of the world. I, I find it exciting. I, I find it, you get a real connection with, with what it is that you're doing. Um, and you get to travel to these wonderful exotic places. Being on top of Mauna Kea in Hawaii, it, it really does feel like you're out of this world. It's, it's, it's not like any other place on Earth. Uh, in fact, it's more like Mars than any, anywhere else. Well, welcome to Mauna Kea. Super 2, submillimeter array, Subaru, Keck. No idea what that is. But CFHT, Gemini, um, the, I think that's the Hawaiian telescope. And this, whoops. This few cuts, what we are working with. Um, so these are a few images from the actual telescope that I've been using. Though this is u -Kurt, um inside. So what you see is basically, unfortunately, the, the mirror is still covered, so that it's closed. Um, the, there's uh, west, east, south, north marked on the, on the cover. So this is where the mirror is. And then this black tube in the middle, it's a very, very long tube. It's three and a half meters or something like that. That's the actual camera. So this is the wide field camera that we've been using. It's an infrared telescope, um, so um, we're using infrared light, which is slightly redder than red. So this is one of the sunsets from Mauna Kea, and it's really, really beautiful. Um, it's actually so beautiful that tourists spent roughly $100 or so to take a bus to go up to the summit just to see the sunset. For, for us, it's, it's actually, we are quite lucky because uh, we were allowed, I, I should say, to go outside, because in principle we should be working at that time. So we start working at five minutes to sunset, um, doing some um, camera calibrations and stuff. Um, but the telescope operator did that, and Alice and I we were allowed to go outside and enjoy the sunset. As the sun's setting, you need to open the dome so that the telescope temperature, in, the air temperature inside the dome equalizes, so you don't have turbulence. For me, that was always quite a thrilling part. I always liked to go into the dome itself um, and and actually watch the dome open and feel the whole machinery shake and then maybe peek out and and again if, if if you're on Mauna Kea you can often consider yourself that you're the highest person in the whole Pacific at that moment you know that, that's quite a quite an exciting thought. Um, so this is an image uh, where we actually hike to the real summit of, the, of Mauna Kea which is just uh, 200 meters hike a very very exhausting 200 meters hike I should say um, and in this image, you see a few telescopes. So on the right side, um, the, the white bubble, that's the, the CFHT, French-Canadian telescope. Then the, the big silver one is a very famous one. It's Gemini. Um, so that's Gemini North, to be exact. There's another one in Chile. Um, and then it's a Hawaiian University telescope. And the one on the left side, the one that is open, um, and I can actually see a bit of the telescope inside. Um, that's u -Kurt. so it's a three and a half meter mirror in there. It's the biggest infrared telescope in the world. Um, this is the telescope that we've been using when we were there. 
Um, so this is actually quite of a holiday picture um, that we've been showing. We've been uh, um, out for the sunset again. Um, this is a uh, picture that I took roughly when we had an earthquake. So I personally didn't feel it because I probably just thought it was one of the big vans around us moving. Um, but Alice felt it. When we came back to the telescope, um, Thor told us that there was an earthquake. And uh, we looked up the information, which is the next image. Um, it was a 4.4 magnitude earthquake, um, roughly 10 kilometers away from the telescope, so very, very close. And it actually shifted the telescope. Um, so the telescope is built in a way, I should probably show that. Um, it's it's um, basically a metal structure um, that is able to move freely, and it's only held in place by these pistons. So that's a metal piston that looks like this, roughly. And this, two of those hold the telescope. And if there is an earthquake, this breaks. And um, this is the actual piston that broke in our, t in our earthquake. So the telescope was out of place um, by half a millimeter or a millimeter, which of course is big enough to screw up our pointing. So we didn't actually know where the telescope was pointing. Um, so we had to fix that. So we had a long screw like that size and we had to screw that in with a lot of force. So you can see me working hard and breathing a lot um, working hard to, to actually move the telescope into place. I was quite happy because, you know, it was very special. It was also very special because this, the, the earthquake was special. It was an actual Mauna Kea earthquake, which are quite rare. <laughs> How often can you actually move a telescope? I thought that was quite exciting. So this is a picture of basically the control room. Um, the telescope is just behind the wall. The whole telescope is automated so much that you're basically working for two minutes and then um, the computer does all the observations. So you hang around and spend half an hour browsing the web, uh, checking Facebook, writing emails. Oh, it can be very, very boring, absolutely. Um, particularly if you're doing very long exposures, if you're doing the same thing over and over again. Um, yeah, you can just be sitting there counting the hours down, pressing buttons and drinking coffee and listening to music. Um, and I was quite lucky on this, this run. Um, you can actually do some work. So I had my work with me. Unfortunately, it is 4,200 meters high, so it's, it's lack of oxygen. It's really hard to concentrate and you're constantly having a very slight headache. And you also get quite stupid <laughs> because there's a lack of oxygen about, of, uh, there. We, we build these telescopes to be above as much of the atmosphere as we can for image quality purposes. But the higher we go in the atmosphere, the less oxygen there is for our brains. And so you can find that you not only physically slow down, but it's quite obvious that you mentally slow down as well. And if something goes wrong, if you're confronted with a problem, it can take ages to fix it. Whereas you might call down for advice from someone working at sea level and they'll point out the obvious solution straight away. Observing is um, unfortunately a very small um, part of m most astronomers' lives. Um, I've only been observing three times in uh, seven or eight years now, so once in southern Spain and twice in Hawaii. Well, to be honest, I don't get to go observing very much anymore, which makes me a bit sad. I did most of my observing as a student. Now either I get my, my time through this service mode where it's done on your behalf, or I use telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope where you're not really gonna get a chance to go up and uh, press any buttons. Um, I've just worked all through the night, so I didn't actually sleep, which is surprising that I'm, I'm actually quite awake and I'm quite okay. <laughs>